It's Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. I'm here in my garage shop in Lake Orion, Michigan, and this is gonna be a video walk around of my airplane build and where I'm at as of today. A lot of guys are doing videos. That's not something that I've spent a lot of time doing, and this, and I'm not a professional by any means. I'm gonna do this in one take, no editing, uh, so hopefully not too many mistakes or stumbles along the way. Um, so what you're looking at here is a Sling TSI. Uh, it's something that I've been working on now for about a year and a half. And um, it's a combination of a lifelong dream to build a full scale airplane. I did RC for many, many years and have always had an interest in aviation. And uh, so I decided that it was time to actually put, do something with that. I've been building cars for a number of years and here in my shop, you can see I have a lift and hiding behind there is my Daytona Coupe that I built a few years ago. Um, but I've always wanted to do an airplane, so this is it. I, after a lot of looking around, I decided to do a Sling TSI. Uh, that's an airplane manufacturer that's in Johannesburg, Africa, headquartered in the US in Torrance, California. And after a lot of reviews of different options, this was the airplane that I chose. Um, so I actually ordered the first parts, the wing and empennage back in June of 2022. Took about nine months, I received in March, 2023. And I'm not gonna show it in this video, but the wings and empennage pieces are all 100% completed. They're down in the basement, in my basement shop. And yes, I can get them back out. <laughs> And um, they are completely done and ready to go to the next step for painting and final assembly, which neither will happen here at my, in my home shop. Uh, then in May of last year, I ordered the fuselage, undercarriage, canopy, and upholstery kits. I received those in November. And I've been, so that was about a six month lead time. And I've been working on those pieces um, since then. The wing wiring and avionics uh, is going to be local from a company here in Michigan, and I did place my order for those uh, earlier this year with a 10 to 12 month lead time. And finally, the very last order from Sling will be for the engine, firewall forward and prop, which actually that order is in process right now, and they're telling me that it will be three to four months and I should have that. So just a brief recap, I have... Um, the sling estimates that the airplane build is about a 1,000 hour project. Um, I must be one of the slower builders in town because I'm at a thousand, slightly over 1,000 right now. And I expect that I've got another few hundred to go. So I will be a little bit over the estimate, but that's okay. I'm pretty slow, first time I've ever done this. And I admit to spending a lot of time uh, prototyping, dry fitting stuff, uh, mocking things up before I actually commit to assembly. Um, the final comment is um, many people who build airplanes will immediately notice that this is all raw aluminum. Uh, that's a subject of much discussion. The uh, Sling TSI is made from 6061 aluminum, which is has very strong anti-corrosive capabilities all by itself. And so also because I'm working here at home, I am not doing any additional corrosion, whether that's uh, priming or uh, alodyne, anything like that. When the airplane's all done, uh, there is the option to do an uh, after completion corrosion X um, treatment, and that's something that might be considered. But the 6061 by itself has extreme anti-corrosion properties, so I really am not concerned about that. Um, the other comment that I will make before we get into the details is, one of the reasons I picked the sling is because this entire airplane is made from used using pulled rivets. There are uh, no bucked or rivets, squeezed rivets in the airplane. They're all pulled rivets. Thousands of them, I can say that, but um, that makes it possible for it to be done um, by one person. And that was really the only option for me. So I'm doing this almost essentially by myself. Uh, occasional help by a buddy when I've got something lift to move around, heavy to move around. But other than that, I'm doing everything by myself. So um, it was, it's also interesting that the Factory 5 cards that I built before also are heavily used of aluminum and pulled rivets. So this isn't the first time I've had a lot of experience with this kind of assembly work. 
Finally, a couple comments about the airplane itself. It's a four place, uh, low wing airplane. Um, it's empty weight is just over a thousand pounds. It's gross weight is a little over 2000. So it's got a pretty significant useful load. Um, it, this airplane will be fully equipped with Garmin avionics. It's complete IFR certified. And uh, so it, with a full glass cockpit um, on all the advanced uh, avionics, autopilot, etc. It uses a Rotax uh, 915 IS engine, which is also a pretty advanced engine uh, with uh, full electronic controls, uh, FADEC uh, in, the, in the cockpit. So you have only a single lever for power. Uh, it has a collective pitch prop. And um, so it's all around a quite advanced airplane uh, for being experimental home built. So let's just take a quick walk and look around it. So he, the firewall, which just went on this week, uh, that's one of the few pieces that's not aluminum. It is stainless. And the motor mount, you can see with the uh, nose gear. I just have the motor mount nose gear temporarily mounted. They'll be coming off. There's insulation that goes on there. And then a whole bunch of components, firewall forward components have to be mounted, which I don't have yet. The inside of the uh, fuselage is basically complete from a mechanical standpoint. You can see the uh, rudder pedals here, uh, the sticks. Um, that thing in the center there is the flap controller. Uh, the sticks are all set to go. They're all working and hooked into the controls, at least in the fuselage. Um, that big thing through the center there is the main spar carry through. That's the main strength for the wing. And that is one of the few pieces of the airplane that is pre-assembled to the factory. So they make uh, that, that particular piece, and then there are a number of pieces with the controls, hinges, and um, all the push rods, etc., are all factory made. Uh, the rest of it, this is what they call a flat kit, so there's no pre-assembly. I'm doing everything uh, myself. The black that you can see all around is insulation, um, and that, that area right there where the spar carried through, that's also where the... Uh, the, the pilot and passenger seats fit right over that area. Then we get further in the back here, and those angled pieces there are where the back seat sets, and under the floor is where all the wiring and hoses, brake lines, fuel lines, etc., will be installed when the time comes. Working farther back, uh, this area in here is a luggage compartment, and I'm looking right through what will ultimately be the luggage door. My next step literally will be putting the skins on the top or the rear part of the fuselage here now that everything underneath is complete. The sling also designed a, uh, what they call a luggage extension in this available space here. I've already carpeted it just to make because it's easier to get to at this point. Um, you can see some of the insulation on that box. And then back in here, this, is, this area is now all complete. It'll be, look can see it a little better when we get it on the other side. On the tail section here, this is, you can see the mounting. These pieces here are for mounting the horizontal stabilizer, the vertical stabilizer mounts here and back here. And then on here we have, this is a uh, coax for the uh, VOR antenna that's on top of the vertical stabilizer. And then this wiring here, one is for the strobe that's on top of the rudder, and the other is for the uh, electric trim servo that's in the elevator. You can see there are you know, these, my little band-aids here, that's actually static port. I um, covered them up because I don't want those anything to get in there. Um, this NACA duct is for uh, the ventilation inside the uh, cockpit area. more views of the inside. The stick assemblies were also produced by the factory, so, and I painted the top of them, so I've got some wrap on there to protect that, and they still have the grips that'll get put on when all the avionics is installed. And this wiring that's showing up here, that's wiring from the tail for the various antennas. The blue is uh, 
lines for the static ports that are in the back, and another set of wires over there for, that come in from the rear of the fuselage. Working the way around. That little black box right there is a Garmin uh, magnetometer, magnetometer. It's the uh, basically an electronic compass. So it's placed back here so it's as far away as possible from any kind of ferrous materials or anything and then it will provide to the instruments uh, the exact uh, direction that the airplane is it's flying. The, uh, the kit is, uh, I would have to say, I give it a very, very high marks. All of the parts are uh, amazing how well it fits together. All the holes are pre-punched. Uh, there is a little bit of match drilling, but I can tell you that I, I have done a lot of work in every single hole exactly lined up. It's really impressive. So that's, that's what the fuselage looks like. Like I say, the uh, wings and empennage are in the basement. We're not going to mess with those right now. Um, I did, just for grins, I, I brought up uh, one of the seats. So that's, that's the seats that will eventually go in there. This is uh, the two that are in the front. The back seat is a bench seat with a split back. So it's got a little bit of versatility. And then tucked over in the corner there is the, uh, the, the canopy that is very close to being the next thing to go on. That's uh, fiberglass, obviously, and uh, has the doors because it, it's like a clamshell door that you climb, step up on the wing and climb in. Uh, also a very, very impressive assembly. Everything is, the doors are pre-hung, everything is perfect. So the other fiberglass parts on this, uh, obviously the cowl is fiberglass. Uh, the gear that I've been walking past is a composite. I just put that in this week. Um, and you can see on here the, um, get there eventually. I did put upgraded brakes on it. The kit comes with a single puck uh, disc brake and a lot of guys are upgrading to a, a double puck and that's, that's, what I've, that's what I have on mine. So that's it. That gives you an idea of what it looks like and uh, Hopefully this has been useful. It's been a fun project. I estimate that I've probably will be done sometime around this time next year. Um, but I don't know. I'm just enjoying it and having a good time building it. Um, thanks a lot. Bye.